Hi, thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two. Uh, you may not realize it as a trusted viewer of Celebrating Act Two, but the three people you see on your screen are all native New Yorkers. Yes, mm. it's true. And Art is the one who can verify it with his Brooklyn accent. You're talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> did, did we just talk about Long Island? We did talk about Long Island. Which, yeah, by the way, so which, Art by the way, Brooklyn is on Long Island. Brooklyn, Queens, Nassau, Suffolk. I just want to let you know that, you know, when you're born and uh, raised in Brooklyn, you remember things like that. So, Art, we're talking restaurants here. We're with the virtual gourmet himself, John Mariani. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Brooklyn? I was, I was, I lived in Brooklyn before, while well, you could still afford to live in Brooklyn. Before okay. they had restaurants? Before, before the closest you could get to affording to live in Brooklyn is Philadelphia, which is, uh, <laughs> uh, people were commuting. So what's with Brooklyn? What, what did you do to my Brooklyn? Well, a lot has been done to Brooklyn that is unfortunate in, in a sense. Uh, it, it was, as you once said, a place where, uh, you know, Brooklyn is the fourth largest city in in uh, America, um, and it's vast. And every immigrant group settled there, largely Italians, largely Jews, Germans, Russians, and so forth. And they had their nice little ethnic pockets. But as time wore on after World War II, um, well, it's interesting that movies, Hollywood movies, always refer to Brooklyn as kind of a rough, tough place, you know, and in Casablanca, when uh, Colonel Strasser says, uh, he says, well, you know, after we finish off with Europe, we are coming and we may visit you in New York. And and uh, Humphrey Bogart says, well, there are certain parts of Brooklyn I wouldn't advise you to try to invade, you know, <laughs> and, and that goes on. Um, and Brooklyn was always that outer borough. OK, well, after World War Two, as you know, it, it really did go downhill. So that places like Bensonhurst, Park Slope, Greenpoint, Carroll Garden, the Williamsburg, uh, Bed-Stuy and others were not places you wanted to go after six o'clock. Uh, okay. and, and nightly news, I witnessed through the northern killing of six people in Bensonhurst, you know, um, it was rough and it was tough. Um, but then it's gotten gentrified since the 1990s. And as you suggested, you can no longer afford to live there. People went there in search of cheap lodgings, uh, cheaper lodgings than in Manhattan, found out within a year or two, those brownstones that were costing $500,000 with $100,000 to fix them up, are now going for 1.2, 1.4. Well, this brought all this, these other despicable people, all those uh, uh, yuppies and Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z people who demanded that they have trendy restaurants. And that they have restaurants that uh, are not like you know, old, old Brooklyn pizzerias and so forth. Well, I've got news for everybody. There was, before there were 12 uh, course tasting menus and chefs who used tweezers with their food and uh, pizzerias, which uh, they put white truffles on and charge a $90 for pizza. Before that, Brooklyn has a very rich restaurant history going back to the 19th century because of all of those ethnic uh, immigrants, those waves who came, um, not least of which was Gage and Tolner, which is still extant. It's gone through a lot of, uh, my, of uh, transmogrifications over the years. It was closed. It was reopened. Um, and now it was taken over just two years ago and repolished it because it's a landmark interior. This is very, very rare, even New York. You can't touch any of those gas lamps. You can, they, they were rewired for, for electricity a long time. But the tile work and the uh, beautiful wood and the mirrors is exactly as it would have been back in 1899. Uh, there was, uh, and you can still go there. The food is much better than it ever was. And now you don't have to pay a guy to look after your car, which people used to do. If they wanted to go there, uh, as with Peter Luger, the great steakhouse, you'd go there with your friends in a car, and then you'd guy was waiting on the street, doesn't work for the restaurant, and you give him ten bucks, and he watches your car, and it's still there when you get out. Maybe for twenty bucks, just with you get it with the tires. Um, <laughs> so, 
and that was Peter Lugas. Peter Lugas is still there. It's doing as, as well as ever. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I'm sorry to say that there's a Peter Lugas that's going to be opening in Las Vegas. And the reason I'm sorry is because, you know, they never, there was another branch, there's always been another branch of Lugas out on the island, um, uh, been there forever. But they said, we will never uh, operate anywhere else because we cannot possibly get <clears throat> the amount of first rate USDA prime dry aged beef that we hand select. If we open someplace else in Washington or Miami, there's just no way to get that. As a matter of fact, sometimes during the summer, if the supply is low, um, they will only take so many res reservations and say, no, no more because we, we're not going to serve you an inferior state. Las Vegas means they're going to have 200, 300, 400 seats. I don't want to get into it. Um, in any case, so there was those two which are very well known. There were places that are now gone, like uh, Restaurant Morion, North, North its Prime Rib and Yorkshire Pudding, Price's Tavern for its uh, fried chicken, Schneider's Lobster House, and Lundy's, which started out as a push cart in Sheepshead Bay. I was opened as a restaurant in 1926 by Irving Lundy, and it grew to have 2,800 seats. It just sprawled all over Sheepshead Bay. And 2,800 seats and served a million people a year. Um, it was kind of like the cheese fake factory of, it, of his day. And it closed only in 1979 when the area around Coney Island was going, going bad. Um, there is uh, the neighborhoods have, one of the things you have to say about gentrification is that the neighborhoods have improved and those brown stores are pretty, pretty beautiful. Now, there's always been Nathan's famous hot dogs, which started in 1916 in Cody Island, and it has its annual hot dog eating contest, as you know. And this past year, just over the 4th of July weekend, the perennial winner, Jay Ches Joe Chestnut, down 62 hot dogs in 10 minutes which is not even his personal best showing, which I think was 71 one year. Um, um, I think that's disgusting, but it's a big deal out in Coney Island. And Nathan's, I think Nathan's Frankfurt is on non I really do. I think they just a little bit of gold. They got that snap. They got those crinkle fried potatoes. And you can buy them in the supermarkets anywhere. They have enough yeah. beef, not like Luger's, okay? Uh, Junior's, opened in 1950s, advertised as the world's most fabulous cheesecake. And New Yorkers will not argue with that. Um, so much so that Junior's cheesecake is the cheesecake served in all of the best uh, New York steakhouses. Really, they don't make their own. So we can't make it any better than Junior's, so we'll all save, we'll all save money, don't have to hire a pastry chef, just serve juniors, everybody's going to get a piece of juniors. Um, there are other places like Mile and Frankel's Essence and Shelsky's Delicatessens. Those are all gone. In the, in the um, Italian neighborhood, Ferdinando's Focacceria opened 1904, and uh, even after the Brooklyn Queens Express, we just disemboweled the neighborhood and just killed everything off there. Fernandino's are still there. Gargulo's is an old, old Coney Island, 1907, expanded by the Russo brothers in 1965, and that also is enormous. Then Mick and Auntie Monty from Naples opened Monty's in 1906 with their famous Venetian room where Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis Jr. used to sing, and where they were seen in Pritzi's honor uh, there. Um, you could always get great, great pizza. Grimaldi's on Front Street, Totono's, there's always a line outside the door. Um, when Totono's closed in 2012, people like stormed the place, so they had to open within a year, and it's back in business. Bamante's opened in Williamsburg in uh, 1900. It's uh, featured in the uh, uh, TV show um, uh, The Sopranos. Um, Chinese places where vast zim sum parlors like Bamboo Garden, East Harbor Seafood, and then there's these huge, everything's huge out there, because they have a lot of space, and there's these huge Russian places where you go with enormous spread, and lots and lots and lots of vodka, and Russian music, and shashlik, and pinmini, and all these great things, and, and red vodka roll, red caviar roll, and uh, those are the Tatiana and Medilchaynik, I hope I pronounced that chow down on borscht and smoked salmon and beef stroganoff and so forth and celebrate. So most of those places are still there. So if you want a taste of old Brooklyn, 
You're scratching yourself there, there John? I am. <laughs> I got an itch. You got an itch. You got a scratch. Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 I didn't want to miss this one. So could you, can we do take two of the scratch? Oh, you got one of those uh, wooden uh, mallets there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So well, John, it, it sounds like Brooklyn not only has a rich, long history of great restaurants, but it sounds like the old line classic Brooklyn restaurants are still around, mostly, mm. mixed with these newer, trendy, hip restaurants. It's a healthy mix, very much yeah. so. I remember yeah. uh, growing up, growing up, uh, we would go uh, uh, maybe after a date night or or as part of a date night, we would run down to, I guess it was a cheap set Bay Mondays, great seafood uh, uh, area, and have uh, a bucket of uh, 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 clams. Uh, you know, they, they bring them over the table, you break them up and you eat them and dump them in butter. Uh, obviously, Junior's, if you had a couple extra bucks, you'd go to Junior's and cheesecake was great. I don't think as good as what Lindy's in Manhattan. That was sort of like always a special place for cheese, but Junior's was really good. Uh, but there's another good one, but there is no more Lindy's. There's a, I don't think there's a Lindy's restaurant, but they have a Lindy's bakery where you can still get yeah. the cheesecake. But it's true. I mean, when you think that these places have been around for 120 years or, or more, um, that they were su always supported by the locals. Um, right. Some tourists might have come from Manhattan or the Bronx. I mean, my family, didn't, we lived in the Bronx. We had our places to eat. We didn't, we're not going to barrel out to, um, to uh, Brooklyn. But, uh, you know, as I said, the Brooklyn Expressway really eviscerated the uh, mm. borough. That caused a lot of its downturn in the 1960s and 70s. Yeah. But it's back. Well, Brooklyn's come back. It's a very popular place. Uh, no bigger, but better. <laughs> John, but thanks so, for the tour of Brooklyn. When you, when you, by the way, when you do go across the, uh, uh, the Brooklyn Bridge, it does say you were entering the fourth largest city in America. I, right. I remember that from back then, and I think it's still true today by population. Yeah. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.